This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. America's Betrayal of Israel, a provocative title. But does it describe fairly and accurately the situation today? And if so, does it also refer not just to America, but also to other Western nations and governments? And could it have something to do with the tremendous rise of anti-Semitism around the world, but especially I want to focus on the Western world? Are these statements true? We will see today. We will see. Let me begin with an article by Israel 365 News, dated March 24. Israel is fighting not one, but two wars of defense. The first is against the axis of Iran and its proxies, Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis of Yemen. The second is against America. The Biden administration is determined to impose upon Israel a Palestine state, even though this would become another Hamastan and place central Israel in grave danger of October 7 style attacks. The Biden administration does not understand that despite widespread opposition to Netanyahu over his domestic record, Israel is united in support of going into Rafah to defeat Hamas. It is also united in opposition to a Palestinian state. American liberals believe that if only Netanyahu could be removed, Israel would merely fall into line with U.S. demands. This was illustrated last week by the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. In a shocking statement, he called for an Israeli election once the war starts to wind down to oust Netanyahu. According to the Oxford University Press Dictionary of American Family Names, Schumer derives from a German word that means a good for nothing. Schumer claims instead that his name derives from the Hebrew Shomer, or guardian, and so he boasts to be the Shomer of Jewish values. How dare he? He is not a Shomer. What has horrified so many is that Schumer and the other liberal American Jews who are taking aim at Israel's right wing are using Jewish values as a shield behind which they are betraying Israel and the Jewish people and delivering them to their enemies. In every generation, say the Jews at Passover, they rise up against us. To the enemies of the Jewish people today, Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, we must add the Biden administration, Chuck Schumer, and the liberal Jewish fifth column. That's how this article is putting it. But they are not the only ones saying this. Let us talk about the dangerous nonsense of a two-state solution. Israel Today wrote on March 22. Israelis today are horrified at the idea of Palestinians getting their own state, from which they would inevitably launch massive terror attacks. Many question why the Biden administration is pushing for a two-state solution, when the majority of Palestinians openly express support for terrorism. And let me add, most are against a two-state solution as well. They want a one-state solution, just them. The article goes on to say, the Israeli public is aware that the U.S. government and the international community did not react similarly when, for example, Syria massacred 600,000 of its own citizens. This heavy pressure on Israel is viewed by Israelis as a cheap way for the Biden administration to gain political points on the American street. 
Vice President Kamala Harris stated that the administration had not ruled out quote-unquote consequences for Israel if it quote-unquote defiles Biden and attacks Hamas in Rafah. We'll come back to that in a moment. But first let me report what we read in Breitbart's article on March 25. It says, Netanyahu cancelled a meeting between his advisors and White House officials on Monday after the Biden administration let an anti-Israel resolution pass at the UN's Security Council. The US abstained on this resolution, which it could have vetoed by voting against it. The re resolution calls for an immediate ceasefire in the war between Israel and Hamas, however, it does not condemn Hamas for its October 7 terror attack, something the United Nations has yet to do, and does not condition a ceasefire on the release of the remaining 134 Israeli hostages still held in Gaza. Last week, the White House demanded, demanded that Israel sent representatives to Washington to consult about Israel's plans to enter Rafah. However, after Monday's decision by the Biden administration to allow the UN resolution backed by Russia and China to pass, Netanyahu called the meeting off. Now, the US said it agreed with the UN resolution's demand for an immediate ceasefire, but it abstained because it didn't include a condemnation of Hamas. But Politico adds on March 25, the decision of the US to abstain, rather than to veto the resolution, is also Washington's sharpest action to date at the UN against its ally, against Israel. Now, surprisingly, Donald Trump made some very controversial statements. We read in LifeSide News, Dated March 28, Donald Trump said Israel's behavior in conducting its attack on the 2.3 million people of Gaza has done tremendous damage to how the Jewish state is perceived around the world, putting them in trouble and encouraging anti-Semitism. And I quote, you have to finish up your war. Israel has to be very careful because you are losing a lot of the world. You're losing a lot of support. You have to finish up. You have to get the job done. Tom suggested that the major rise in anti-Semitism is a natural result to the devastation the Israeli army is inflicting upon tens of thousands of innocent lives. Quote, I think Israel made a very big mistake. I wanted to call Israel, apparently Netanyahu, and say, don't do it. You have a lot of people on the outside that are not friendly to Israel, and they are never going to be friendly to Israel. And you have to be very careful. You are in a very treacherous neighborhood, he said. Now, we don't quite understand what he was getting at from the interview we have just quoted parts of. It's not very obvious, but let me also say that Netanyahu and Trump were friendly at one time, but this friendly relationship turned somewhat sour when Netanyahu wasted no time to congratulate Biden for his victory over Trump after the last election. And of course then we heard about the strike, the Israeli strike on seven, eight workers which did not help Israel at all. Deutsche Welle wrote on April 2, Netanyahu admitted a tragic case of an unintentional strike by Israeli forces on innocent people. Australian, British and Polish citizens are reported to be among the seven aid workers killed in an alleged Israeli airstrike. The Israeli military has expressed sincere sorrow and has promised an investigation. Now, the Biden administration and Mr. Biden wasted no time in condemning Israel for the strike. 
AFP wrote on April 2, President Joe Biden voiced strong criticism of, of Israel, saying it has not done enough to protect such workers. Biden, Biden said he was outraged and heartbroken by the death of Monday of the World Central Kitchen Workers, adding that distributing aid in the Palestinian territory has been difficult because Israel has not done enough to protect aid workers trying to deliver desperately needed help to civilians. Now, was the same outrage expressed when Palestinians, when Hamas, when terrorist groups like Hezbollah, the Houthi, and so on, attacked innocent civilians in Israel, innocent women and children? Well, you know the answer, don't you? And so we find that other Western friends and allies began to attack Israel as well. For instance, even before this latest episode, this latest attack and this latest strike, French President Emmanuel Macron told Netanyahu that any forced transfer of people from Rafah would amount to a war crime. A war crime! That's a very strong threat. So Germany, of course, had to be part of it as well. DN YUZ wrote on March 29, German officials have begun to question whether their country's support for Israel has gone too far. The change in stance also tracks with the evolving position of Germany's most important ally, the United States. So the US is leading, others like Germany are following. Until recently, German public opinion seemed firmly behind the government's support of Israel's military campaign. But polls by public broadcasters in recent weeks show that nearly 70% of Germans felt Israel's military actions were not justifiable. The matter has become inescapable for Mr. Scholz, Olaf Scholz, the German Chancellor, and he has recently made some comments critical of Israel. You see, Germany's friendship with Israel, which was really overshadowed by Germany's friendship with the Palestinians, it will become more and more strained. And so we find that anti-Semitism is rising in the Western world as well. Breitbart wrote on March 21, anti-Semitism in, in, in European cities is reaching 1930s levels, and London is the worst of them all. The growth of anti-Semitism in Britain is terrifying. Many British Jews now avoid central London while demonstrations are taking place. And the Sun, another British paper, added on March 24, eight Palestinian staff told of torture by the Israel Defense Forces at Nasser Hospital in Gaza. And when the BBC reported that, there was great outrage by the British government against Israel. But the article goes on to say, but six of the eight medics have posted anti-Semitic and pro-Hamas messages online for years, a fact that was not included by the BBC. Former Attorney General Sir Michael Ellis said, this is more evidence of an endemic anti-Israel bias at the BBC. But it's not just the BBC. There are many other anti-Israel news organizations with the same kind of bias. Let's talk about Canada for a moment. The Times of Israel wrote on March 29, Canadian Jews have begun to worry about the very viability of their community of some 400,000 people. They fear for its future amid growing hostility to Jews on the streets and government regulation, they say, limits their ability to practice their faith. A recent example of the regulation was the government's introduction last year of new animal welfare related limitations on kosher meat production. Many Canadian Jews view the move on kosher meat as fresh evidence 
that their society is becoming inhospitable. And let us not forget that Trudeau recently announced that Canada will not deliver any more weapons to Israel. And so anti-Semitism, including sponsored or supported by many Western governments, is clearly on the rise. And I'd like to close with the following article, which summarizes it very well, I believe. It's by JNS, Jews News Syndicate, of March 21. The outburst of anti-Semitism across the West following the Hamas mass massacre on October 7 and the world's inability to clearly differentiate between the attacker and the victim indicates that the lessons of the Holocaust have not been learned, the Czech ambassador to Israel said. The ambassador said that she was particularly shocked by how underreported the sexual crimes of Hamas were. She said that a largely uninformed and uninterested European public was being influenced by a strong anti-Israel slant in the media, Several major anti-Israeli countries in Europe, senior EU leaders, and the ignorant voices of uneducated youth at universities. And who can doubt that the same is true for the United States of America? The article goes on to say that Prague is also facing strong EU pressure against moving its embassy to Jerusalem. And then the ambassador also referred in this context to the West's betrayal of Czechoslovakia in the lead up to World War II. The betrayal of Israel continues. The West, being led by America, looks at Israel as a perpetrator, and the Palestinians, including Hamas, as the victim. What a shameful distortion of the facts and what terrible consequences this may have for Israel, the state of Israel, the Jews, and the entire world. Thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Lang for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God. P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.